job boards and staffing. Talent acquisition marketing maturity model is next on the show. Joining me now from Amsterdam is Lori Cope. He is one of the guys at Aim Well. And uh, Lori, uh, Lowry, thanks for joining us today. Thank you for the invite. Glad to join. Excellent. So you have a new report out that job boards should uh, look at. But uh, tell us first, who is Aim Well? What do you guys do? Well, we are uh, part of the big media group where we run our own job boards. By running our own job boards, we actually learn that uh, quite often you deliver applications in certain areas very well, but certain areas you lack, and you need to be way better in actually how you drive performance at the right jobs and really on a granular level. To fix that one, we were looking around on different places, different suppliers, and we didn't find anyone who actually could do this on multiple fronts, meaning active job seekers, passive job seekers, and across multiple job uh, kind of advertising channels simultaneously on a granular level. Yeah. Once we concluded that one, we said like, we need to actually build this ourselves because only going granular, can you be fully 100% sure that you can de deliver maximum performance for every job? You can make sure that you advertise this the right place, you advertise at the right, uh, let's say, bidding and optimization strategy and you stop when you hit your target. So that's what we built, and that's what we used first our own job boards in Belgium and Netherlands, sorry, in the Netherlands, and then also rolling this out now globally because we're not only one who has the same challenge that in the current economy, people are not coming to a job board. If everybody has a job, why should you go to a job board? You need to go and find them outside and bring them to the funnel in the most efficient way at the right places. Yeah. What job boards do you guys own and run? Can you give us a quick breakdown of that? Yeah, we have a, in, in Netherlands, we have a National Vacatura Bank, which is a blue collar uh, focused uh, job board. Uh, the second one uh, next to Indeed. Uh, and then also we have also uh, Intermediar, which is the white collar focused, kind of as similar as a LinkedIn focus. So we kind of uh, have a two job boards which we run here. So we are, we have a lot of learnings as a job board. And we also a lot of learnings as a media group because we can see actually how different users surf in the web and then arrive to different jobs and apply there. You mentioned passive uh, candidates there. Let me ask you a question around that. So um, in terms of attracting them and advertising to them, I'm assuming you're talking about social media tools like Twitter, Facebook ads, things like that. Um, have you, from my experience, and tell me what you guys see, but that traffic it converts at a much less higher rate than you know a, an active candidate on another job board somewhere or other type of job site, you know, whatever you want to call it. What are your thoughts on that that theory? I would say you spot on. The highest channel actually, of course, is uh, if somebody shows intent, goes to let's say to Google, search a job, or goes to job board, search for job, they are very much there in the funnel. Mm -hmm. And then when you go to social media, then you have totally different group which is there ready to move some of them if they find a nice kind of trigger. But you really need to be granular there, uh, focus on the right target audiences because otherwise you just have a massive wastage. So you need to make sure that you advertise the right place at the right spend with the right way. So your creatives needs to be specific for that job. For example, in the social media, uh, we create automatic, actually not for social media only, but for every single job, we create automatically a job ad, individuals a job ad, which is a mix of aggregators, social media, display. And we create automatically the right image. So if it's a truck driver, there's a the right image, which looks like a truck driver uh, showing up with the right text. Uh, if it's a marketing manager, we have the right imagery, the right creatives going, going live there. So we have uh, thousands of images to make sure that uh, we don't only show the right place, but we show the right stuff as well to drive the conversions. In the end, we have even a higher, is the kind of display ads, which have even lower conversion, but quite often, or not, uh, if you want to really go wide and have a mass recruitment, you even have to go as far as that one, because if they're not on a job board, you need to go outside and find them and quite often bring them to the funnel. Interesting. All right, let's get into your report a bit. I'll share my screen so the audience can uh, see it. So it says uh, job boards and staffing companies face multiple disruptions on the talent side. The low employment level means fewer active job seekers visiting job boards. I mean, the number of applicants per job is declining rapidly. 
on the tech side, this puts extra pressure, you guys say, in reaching passive kinks in the world where the number of channels used for talent acquisition is growing. Uh, so let's dive into this here. There's a, uh, we'll put the report link in the uh, show description for the audience here if you guys want to read this. It's a free report. You can go out there and uh, just look at. Uh, let's start with the um, four categories that matter, uh, Lowry. Mm -hmm. um, walk us through some of these. Yeah, quite often, maybe when we talk with job bots and we ask, how are you doing? They're saying, I'm doing quite well. I have someone who does aggregators. I have someone who does social media and have someone who does search. And then if you do it like this way, you always kind of uh, do this based on category. Based on category, You say, I wanna focus on the jobs in Washington, or you wanna focus on developers, you wanna focus on the catering jobs, but you can never really go granular saying, oh, by the way, I need to focus on different jobs. So you can never optimize on the individual job level. So it means also, you need to have a high level of automation if you wanna go from the kind of the nascent to emerging to professional expert, because doing this on a manual basis without the proper tooling is never going to fly, which means you could have per channel generic campaign optimizations, sorry, campaign setup, which does a, I would say, kind of basic job. Uh, and if I take kind of the most left hand side kind of example, for example, I spoke recently with one job board and they said, I have aggregators well established. Uh, we agreed a very clear pricing with them, which apparently is already for the last two years the same, and the same for all the jobs. What you get back there, of course, is the aggregators will push the easiest jobs where they can actually get the, deliver those uh, clicks, and more the difficult jobs they actually hold back. And of course, if you look as if you are a customer of those uh, job boards, they say. I want to have applies also from a difficult to fill jobs. So we really need to be more granular and saying, okay, having unified pricing, unified approach to kind of how you run your campaigns is not going to be enough. The other thing which was kind of blowing me a little bit away and frustrating as well, when we spoke with those kind of uh, more left-hand side, nascent emerging uh, job boards, they still use cookie-based tracking, which means uh, in our experience, you miss roughly 30% of the conversions rate optimization, what you do. And if you miss the kind of proper tracking, you have almost never good insight on uh, bots traffic, which in many cases, which have seen a uh, reach even up to 30%. So it means if you have a lot of traffic, what you're paying for comes at four o'clock at night and you don't have a proper understanding about it or discussion about it, you actually have a lot of wastage. So I would say kind of, it starts with the tracking, understanding what you measure and how to measure it. It goes actually focusing on the right media channels, media spend levels. So that's going more to emerging professional. And expert is really kind of saying, you optimize this on the most granular level for every single job saying, hey, for those jobs, I need extra attention for those not. And for every job having a technology strategy and people in place to deliver the right uh, performance. You mentioned uh, bots there for a second. I want to touch on that if I could. I uh, I run several websites, just some job boards among them. And lately mm -hmm. I've been seeing this bot from Germany come over mm -hmm. uh, in my stats, uh, crawling these, even my blog sites, like my, my recruiting news websites. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious, I'm, I, I'm like, I'm not sure what it is. Like, uh, do you have any thoughts on how, kind of how to filter that stuff out, how to interpret it in terms of just the, the traffic it's sending over? Because it's not, it's obviously a box. I can tell it's only looking at the page for a second, you know, right? It's then it leaves and goes on to the next page. I would say kind of in our case, it's our job to understand that we deliver value for only kind of meaningful clicks. Uh, I would say kind of it's industry problem. And the industry problem uh, first surfaced really on ad technology in general, because uh, let's say Adobe has been buying a lot of uh, ad stack technologies, Google as well, in actually being able to identify bots traffic. Uh, so kind of in display ads, it has been kind of like a ironed out already for many years, kind of make sure that it doesn't pollute your reports and you don't kind of end up paying for those ones. In the recruitment, uh, when I speak with the job boards, uh, I get quite often this like, ah, uh, this moment like, oh, we see some of that one, but we don't know how to deal with it. Or like, uh, we don't know actually how to monitor it properly. So there's this like a kind of back in the head awareness about it. 
but not awareness actually how to deal with this. So quite often I would say here as well, you need someone to understand the, who can look at this one and also can deal with this one because let's say you wouldn't want to spend 30% uh, extra for things which don't deliver a value for you. I would feel ripped off. Yep. Okay, let's move on to the report here. It says, with all the changes taking place or analysis, isolated four specific accelerators that stand out as the principal drivers on the fast track to maturity and improved performance. So walk us through these, if you could. Yeah, maybe kind of first things sound like a, uh, some of the kind of a, first it starts like a, if you want to advertise your job at the right place, you need to understand what is this about. Kind of the, the most complex exper uh, examples, what we see is, uh, Instead of saying a marketing manager, people are actually advertising for head of growth for grow, fast growing company. And quite often job seekers don't really understand what you're exactly looking for. And there are even more exotic job titles. So it means if you're going to put that job title forward uh, and try to classify, is this about marketing or is it about customer service, something else, you actually shoot in the wrong place and you actually shoot advertise in the wrong way. So the first thing where we actually see in the current data-driven approach, you really need to get your taxonomy classification right. If there is example of logistics person, there's huge difference if you're looking for taxi driver or truck driver. You really need to go granular enough to understand what, what is this job about? Who are those right audiences? Because otherwise you can never actually shoot in the right direction. By fixing that one, we have seen actually a significant uplift just by advertising the right thing in the, in, at the right place. So that is maybe the first item. The cookie-less end-to-end tracking is something which we also learned that the, a lot of uh, talks we have, job boards talk about pixel tracking. And pixel tracking already is very much blocked by the likes like uh, Firefox uh, app has been blocking the third-party uh, cookies already for many years. And in the next year also the Google will actually block the third party tracking. So it means unless you deliver something better for this one, you can't, you're kind of a flying half blind. Yeah, you can imagine like if you would be a fighter pilot, half blind, you will be kind of a, in very dangerous situation. That's where the job boards are in my opinion as well. By fixing the traffic, we are able to measure today, in today's world, 30% more conversions. And next year that gap will be even massively bigger because you're tracking of the job boards will be even more complicated. By having more measures of the conversions, it means also you can optimize 30% more of the business you do. You know way better actually what works and what doesn't work. Highly important. No, no, no proper measurement, no, no improvement in performance either. Then the third point is uh, dynamic allocating budget and optimizing across channels. As I said, quite often people optimize per channel but for every single job, you need to have a mix which actually looks all the channels. Do you need to, need to do more social media? Do you need to do it less? Uh, quite often people look desperately for developers and they look this for aggregate, aggregated channels. We have learned that for example, uh, Instagram, uh, Facebook can actually beat ones like LinkedIn in attracting a top talent in, a, in, a, in computer sciences. So kind of a, you really need to use data-driven approach for every single job category location, looking at where are those people and you need to optimize this as you go across multiple channels instead of saying, hey, you guys do social and you guys do aggregators because if you do this in two different teams, you can never deliver the maximum performance and you can do this only with the right tooling. I think the one is also the automation of, a, uh, of the tooling. Uh, we have seen that kind of conversion go significantly up. 28% is the, our, our, our learnings on the tests we have done. And I think I kind of mentioned a few times on the tooling. The last thing is quite often uh, we see that there, there's a strategy and agile organization is missing. People are a little bit kind of in inertia saying, we have done this for many years, it works for us. I fully concur that what worked for them in, uh, in the past probably does something for them as well at this, uh, this time of the, uh, of the era. However, I'm very kind of critical whether this is going to be enough 2023 and beyond. And therefore you kind of really need to kind of challenge your team saying, okay, 
is your current strategy, your way of operating, how you measure, how you determine the bits, how you determine like uh, your optimization, how you determine like how you determine what are you actually selling to your clients? Is this still fit for purpose? On the last one, maybe one example. There are a bunch of difficult to fill jobs, which the job boards still sell on the same flat rate. If it's difficult to fill job and you know that your own job board is not going to deliver enough applicants, you know already from the beginning, you need to actually put the job campaign outside on the social aggregators, etc. But if that's the case, you can go also to other, your advertiser and saying, this job is going to be more expensive. So kind of having a more differentiated approach allows to increase average order value and actually have a much more differentiated way of how you sell your products. So the kind of old school, we have flat rate per product mm -hmm. fee needs to be challenged because you should be monetizing uh, your inventory and reach in more intelligent way, which where your sales and marketing need to work in harmony saying, okay, we have a sales strategy for certain jobs and we have a marketing strategy, which backs this up in full. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Hey, I want to ask you a question about um, how you allocate budget to your job boards as far as spend goes. Mm -hmm. Do you have what, like, it's a question I get a lot, like how much should I spend on advertising, right? Uh, mm -hmm. For a new job board or something like that. But is there a percentage of sales you kind of look at as far as what you spend on advertising for proactive, mm -hmm. you know, proactive talent like it's out there? Let's say we are technology provider, which we enable many things. The strategy on actually how to do the marketing and sales, this needs to be defined by our clients. But just to give an example, we can have, we have clients who say, let's say I have 100,000 jobs on my site and I want to run a campaigns which doesn't cost more than $2 per apply across all the jobs. And then it's our job to kind of find and optimize this on a $2 apply per job across the board. Or there is also kind of a, a difficult to fill jobs. We already know that with $2, you're not going to find a developer. In that case, we are discussing, okay, for $50 for this, for this developer job, let's say game developer, uh, crypto uh, fintech developer, you need to pay at least $50 media, but you can sell this on a, probably much higher, let's say on two, $300 uh, price tag because it's very valuable for your uh, client. Yep. Yep. What are, what are your, I know in Europe, um, the job board market is, um, it's different in the U S I think uh, the U S has a lot of competition for pretty much every niche. Mm -hmm. Uh, but in Europe, there's still very, I guess, um, uh, the pricing pressure hasn't been there like in the U S has, right. Cause you've seen just pressure on job board pricing, mm -hmm. uh, heavily in the U S because of all the competition out there. Uh, there was one job board in Germany, Germany, I forget the name of it. Uh, it used to charge something like close to like $1,000 per job posting. Are job posting prices still at those levels in Europe, across Europe, uh, as far as generally speaking? Uh, yes and no. I, I assume you refer to StepStone. Uh, StepStone, yeah. Uh, yeah, StepStone. Uh, uh, they are, they're very much still on the, on, the, on the higher end of the market. And also because they're higher talent shortage, they still, I believe, in the mode of increasing prices versus lowering the prices. Mm -hmm. There are, of course, few markets which are much more, I would say, competitive. So the UK market is much more, I would say, saturated, and uh, and there also the competition is more even. Therefore, kind of the prices are much uh, lower. But even there, I'm hearing job boards actually planning to increase the pricing level. Whether they can pull this off is a different question, but that's their very much kind of intention. And I would expect that the, the leading job boards will have more of the pricing power to kind of dictate higher price levels. Yeah. But $1,000 uh, is still, a, it's still, there's still job boards charging $1,000 per job in Europe. There are a few yeah, more fuels. It's, it's, uh, it's fascinating to me in terms of that pricing. How's, uh, how's Indeed doing over there? Is it, is it becoming, uh, obviously it's a huge company here in the US, right? It's the, 800 pound gorilla in the room. It's uh, last check. They had 63 million monthly visitors in the U S mm -hmm. globally have about 300 million, but um, what types of pressures are they putting over there in Europe on you guys? It's, I would say kind of, if you have the spectrum, it goes from zero to hundred. 
So there are a lot of small countries, it's just out of reach. Let's say the Scandinavian countries, smaller ones, I think in, indeed to be relevant and the kind of a, being able to focus on smaller countries is difficult. So uh, more advanced markets, UK, Netherlands, they are very much present. Germany as well, even though they are not able to monetize all the markets. So kind of a, the fact that they have loads of traffic doesn't mean that they can monetize the traffic in full. There's a lot of still uh, traditional job boards which uh, kind of keep the budgets and pocket the money. Gotcha. But I guess they've been playing a long game, so we'll see which way it goes. Yeah. Well, you can go read the rest of the report. Uh, there's a checklist here for the uh, job boards out there. Want to check it out, Lori? I want to wrap it up with um, uh, a question, a uh, piece of advice, if you could. What What's the number one way if you were starting a new job board today? you would target passive seekers from any kind of uh, strategic tactic, whether it could be advertising, could be content. What, what would you start doing first in terms of uh, trying to attract passive seekers out there? Oh, a very good question. I would kind of say like, a, you have to go granular. So you really need to make sure that you, the job inventory you have, don't start doing a generic brand campaign saying, hey, dear, people come to me because it just doesn't convert. You have to be highly relevant. So if you have thousand jobs on your site, you need to really need to look like how you promote and fill those thousand jobs on an individual level and bring them to your kind of applications uh, on the site. That would be a kind of, a, and you have to look at the, all social media channels across the board to deliver that promise. Good stuff. Well, uh, Larry Cope uh, from Aimwell, we uh, certainly appreciate your time today and uh, thanks for the information. We'll put a link to the report in the uh, show notes there. And uh, I guess have a good, uh, have a good Christmas and uh, see you in 2023. Chris, thank you as well. And everybody, enjoy holiday break. Wishing you all the best. All right. Thanks very much.